Hello, I'm Mr. Brundle, I'm Curriculum Team Leader for French and I'm going to talk to you about the GCSE in French that you can study. So, the GCSE course takes place over years 10 and year 11. Um, in terms of year 10, what we do is we begin to look at the three GCSE themes. I'll tell you more about them in a minute. But essentially year 10, we begin by describing ourselves, those around us, friends and family. We then move on to describe what we do in our free time. Before then moving on to describing our area, which could be anything from describing the contents of our bedroom, to our house, to our town, to our part of the world. Holidays and employments, two big GCSE themes happen next before we move on to describing our school and our school routine. Year 11 is similar but slightly different. So we look at the three GCSE themes in greater depth. So identity and culture is that first theme. Local, national, global and international areas of interest the second. And future work and employment completing the third theme. With regards to, team, uh, to terms 3, 4 and 5, it's a combination of revision, revision skills, practice papers and practicing the various tasks for the speaking exam. So, how you will be assessed in GCSE French? Well, it's really quite simple. You've got four assessment objectives and each one reflecting one of the four language skills. So, listening, speaking, reading and writing. A bit more information about that now. So, each of those skills is worth up to a one quarter, 25% of your overall final mark for that GCSE. Now let's look at the assessment objects in a little bit more detail now. So, for listening, it's not the case that you've got to understand every single word perfectly in order to achieve success at the GCSE. What you do have to do is to be able to understand and respond appropriately to various examples of how the French language is spoken. Could be formal, could be informal, for example. In terms of speaking, again, another myth out there is that you've got to be fluent to do well at this GCSE. That's absolutely not the case. What you do have to do is to communicate and to interact with another person effectively in speech and to do so for a variety of reasons. In terms of reading, again, it's not the case that you need to know every single word in the French language. But you do need to be in a position where, when presented with different types of the written language, you can understand it and respond appropriately and accurately. Finally, the writing. Again, it's not the case that you're writing huge essays. Rather, you've got a variety of stimulus and a variety of purposes for writing within the exam, and your job is to communicate effectively. So, expectations. It goes without saying, given that you're going to be examined on the four skills, you've got to really be prepared to apply yourself in each of the four skills. So that means a willingness from all students to communicate in French, not only in writing, but also in terms of speaking, and to do so with regards to the variety of different GCSE topics. It would be unrealistic to choose this subject and to think you could somehow get away with not learning vocabulary and to not learn it on a regular basis. Of course you do. You should be looking to learn and record vocabulary every week and if possible, not just to write a list of words, but to put it in a usable and useful sentence which you could then use later on in your homeworks and in your assessments. You've got to be willing to become what I call linguistically agile. Now that doesn't mean knowing every word in the French language and it certainly doesn't mean being fluent. But it does mean being prepared, being able to communicate accurately. So with as few mistakes as possible and with some degree of spontaneity. Although we say you've got to talk spontaneously, in reality, it's not quite spontaneous. And during the GCD course, we give you loads of tips and skills as to how to communicate in such a successful way. All students must have a genuine interest in the French language or French culture or the culture of other French speaking countries in order to succeed at this GCSE. 
That's not to say you're going to get a massive exam on French culture, but there will be questions throughout the GCC papers that will assume that you and other students have at least a basic awareness of French culture, life in French-speaking countries. Onward opportunities. So, clearly the GCSE is a springboard. It's a springboard to further academic qualifications, whether it's A-level in French, whether it is a more business-specific or other subject-specific qualifications that have an element of French. In terms of what you can do with a modern foreign language, um, the answer is just about anything. It offers really diverse career opportunities. Um, I haven't always been a teacher. I've done some, but not all of the jobs you can see on this PowerPoint. Uh, and certainly, um, studying languages did not hold me back. On the contrary, it probably made me slightly more attractive and slightly more employable with regards to many of my previous employers. It also gets you a higher salary. Um, it's hard to be precise, but it's anywhere between 5% to 20% more money earned by people who can speak a foreign language, in contrast to those who can't. And I think what we're becoming increasingly aware of as linguists is actually it's a tremendous opportunity to look after yourself and to look after your mental health if you speak a language. The latest scientific research shows, and, and shows quite significantly in fact, that if you speak a modern foreign language, it will strengthen, it will improve your mental health, and also as you get to, uh, to be as old as I am, it's going to prevent getting things like dementia, for example. So that's less useful for you guys, probably quite relevant for me. So, I'm just going to finish this bit on frequently answered questions. I'm going to do my best to answer them briefly. If, of course, you've got any questions, by all means find me, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them as fully as I can. So, do I need to study French? I hear this all the time. It's quite a difficult um, question to answer. The answer is, at this school and at many schools in the country, no, it is not compulsory to study French at GCSE. I think what you need to realise, though, is that it's a highly attractive subject for many employers and universities, and it's a highly attractive subject for many students of your age globally. Do I need to be fluent in French? No, I've never said to any student they need to be fluent. You definitely do not need to be fluent in French in order to do well at the GCSE, or indeed to get the highest grade, grade 9 at the GCSE. Can I pick and mix the four skills? There's still a bit of confusion about this. It used to be the case years ago now that uh, you could do, say, foundation level for reading and writing, but do the higher level for the other two skills. That is not the case anymore. If it is the case that uh, we feel that you are best to do a GCSE in French up to foundation, so up to grade five, then you would be doing so in reading, listening, writing and speaking. Equally, if we feel you've got the potential to get the higher grades, we'll put you onto the higher GCSE paper. But if that is the case, we're putting you in at higher for listening, reading, writing and speaking. So in other words, students will do the four papers, all of them at foundation level, or all of them at a higher level. If you're there thinking, well, I really like reading and writing uh, and listening in French, but I'm not keen on speaking it, then you might want to double think about this. It's not the case that you can do two or three at a higher level, but then one at foundation level. All at foundation or all at higher. So again, this links to what I've just said, do I have to do the speaking exam? The answer is yes, and to be honest, the answer is yes, of course you do. It's fundamental to the GCSE. So you must think really carefully now, and, and I think be honest with yourselves. If you think, no, this is going to be really, really difficult for me to do, then maybe this isn't for you. However, in my experience, I have met very, very few students that were actually unable to do the speaking exam. Don't forget, over the two years, apart from building up your vocabulary, you'll build up your confidence and your expertise. Can I use a dictionary? Good question. Well, in class, the answer is yes, sometimes. And for homeworks, yes, quite possibly. But in terms of the exams, no. It is not the case that you can bring a dictionary with you into any of the French GCSE exams. Who will my teacher be? Well, it might be me, but it might not. 
The French department is currently expanding, so I'm not in a position to tell you who your teacher will be next year. What if nobody at home speaks French? I don't know why, but lots of students think it's a problem. It isn't. My parents didn't speak a word of French, and they still don't. Um, first of all, you shouldn't undersell your own skills. Secondly, we'll provide you with lots of materials and support throughout the two years. Part of that will be uh, advising you and showing you how you can reach for the right sort of resources that you need for your GCSE when you're outside of the classroom. But the key thing here is that if you're the only person in your house who can speak French, that is definitely not an obstacle to studying GCSE French. Why can't I use Google Translate? It's simple. First of all, it's riddled with, um, with mistakes and faults. It's not a reliable tool. Even if you're lucky and it gets you a correct sentence, you've got to be honest with yourself. Have you got that sentence right or has Google got it right? I would strongly recommend to all of my students use anything but Google Translate. In fact, I often say to them, if you want to limit the grade you can get, keep using Google Translate. Anyway, I hope that was useful. I hope you choose to do GCSE French. But in the meantime, au revoir, c'est est, allez maintenant.